boys and girls, we are back working on the Everest. Uh, we left off in the last video with uh, the skid semi kind of installed uh, without the drop brackets. Uh, kind of found, found out that there was going to be some issues with the geometry there. Um, so the point that we're at right now, I just finished welding up some preliminary brackets off camera. Um, I've got the skid compressed down to the center to center distance with these ratchet straps. Uh, we're at 30 inches on both sides. I've got one drop bracket riveted into where it's going to be. So I have to get the skid back underneath the tunnel. I got to get the front bolted in. Um, and then we're going to lower the back end down to about uh, the rake that we're going to want to get the back of the skid sitting flush on the floor. If you remember from the last video, um, the way that everything was kind of bolted in there, the rear of the skid sort of kicked up off the ground, and the front idler wheels here were kind of acting as a pivot point. So um, these brackets should correct that, at least I hope they do. Um, so I guess let's go ahead and get this back underneath the machine, get the front bolted in, and see if we can get those measurements made and drill some holes. All right, we got the skid back up underneath the tunnel. The front arm is bolted in. The rear arm is sitting about where it needs to be. Um, the mounting hole is kind of right at the bottom uh, of the drop bracket, centered on it pretty much. So I can drill a hole at the bottom and another maybe one or two up above from that, uh, just in case I need some adjustment there. Um, but as far as marking the hole, all I did was slide a piece of sharpened round stock in through the other side, just gave it a couple whacks with the hammer, and that left a pretty good center punch um, on the plate. All in all, that's a much more crazy stance than we had the last time. Um, it's raked a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Um, we'll just have to see how that rides. I don't think it's going to be terrible. Um, the angle of attack on the track is nice and gradual, um, so I don't think it's going to trench too bad. Um, as far as just playing around in the powder, I think it's going to be a pretty good setup for that, but time will tell. Um, I guess what we do at the front end kind of all depends on how well it handles as is. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of ski pressure there just due to the rake, so trail riding might not be that great, but like I said, I was never really building this with the intent of riding it on trails. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. In the last video, I talked about how I left off the lock ring um, for the bearing retainer on the opposite side. I was going to cut that and just wrap it around the shaft and then bolt it in place, but all I did was just uh, run some quarter-inch bolts through the holes there and through the belly pan and just bolted that in place, and that's working just fine. Um, so yeah, I guess what we should do next, like I said, is just pull those brackets off. We'll get the holes drilled and then see if we can actually get it mounted semi-sort of permanently and then maybe start working on the engine and the wiring harness and see if we can get this thing out in the snow this weekend. That would be pretty freaking sweet. All right, we got our holes drilled in the brackets. I'm gonna go and rivet these in place temporarily again. I'm going through a lot of rivets, but that's all right. I'd rather go through rivets and make sure I have all the measurements right, just taking these on and off of here. And instead of having to drill, bunch of different holes in the tunnel, turning it into Swiss cheese. I suppose I could always use bolts, but this is working just fine. Test her out and see if she fits. All right, so that lines up pretty good. Um, I don't have it tightened all the way yet just because of the gap um, that's still left between the plate and the skid. Uh, like I'd mentioned in the previous video, the skid is narrower than the old one, so I have to take up that gap yet. And how I'm going to do that um, is just by welding an additional piece of stock to the back uh, of the drop bracket. And that'll, uh, if I do that on both sides, it'll close up the gap all the way and we'll have a nice tight fit there. But um, let's go ahead and get the other side on and we'll tighten it up um, as good as we can for now. And then we'll actually, um, I guess, take the ratchet straps off and then kind of test it out more or less and uh, make sure everything's working the way it should. There's no binding. I don't expect there to be, but um, we'll just have to have to get on it, hop up and down and see, see how it reacts. Yeah, so that made a huge freaking difference using those drop brackets. Um, I don't know how it's going to ride. I can't wait to find out though. I'm sure it's going to be atrocious, but just the way that it looks, I think it's worth it. That's going to look so cool. 
It's pretty freaking awesome to see it coming together like this though. Um, I kind of want to take some time and clean up the tunnel and polish the back half and I sort of want to um, trim it up a little bit from where the drop brackets are and get rid of some of the excess and kind of give it um, more of a taper there, I guess. Uh, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little more streamlined, look uh, a little bit newer. Um, but I did sit on it and uh, definitely need to uh, light, lighten up the suspension a little bit. Um, I took the, the ratchet straps off of it and it's still extremely stiff. Um, so I'm going to see if I can uh, adjust that a little bit and see if I can get it to soften up um, because it takes quite a bit for me to actually compress it. Nope. Um, but it does rebound real well. I'll go give it a push real quick so you guys can see. Um, that center to center distance of 30 inches, I mean, that worked out. There's no binding. It uh, seems to be working good, but when I stand on it, there's like almost zero compression and I'm like, you know, pushing 220. So I think we can probably lighten that up a little bit. Um, I'll have to see what the shocks adjusted at. I didn't actually take a look at that earlier, but um, yeah, all part of the adjustment process, I guess. But that's looking really cool. I'm gonna take a couple minutes and try and decide what to do next. Um, there is more work to be done to those brackets. Like I said, I have to weld on that spacer to the backside and then obviously drill the hole all the way through. So um, I should probably do that next, just keep going on that and get it done done um, instead of moving on to something else. But um, yeah, I don't know, like I said, take a minute, think about it, and uh, I'll get back with you in a couple seconds. So I got the drop brackets all welded up. Uh, there's an additional 3 16th piece of flat stock on the back side of each one of them uh, that will close up the gap between the tunnel and the skid. Uh, I got the first coat of primer on there. I'll flip them over to the back side and then I think we're going to paint them a nice shade of yellow. I think that'll match the machine pretty nice. If not, you can always pop them back off and paint them black, but might as well add some flash to the old girl, I think. So while I'm waiting for those brackets to dry, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up the tunnel. Um, it's got to be done at some point, so I might as well get a start on it now, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to go through and peel all the stickers off of it, uh, drill out any rusty rivets, and re-rivet them, I guess. And we'll try and get the top side cleaned up um, up, up there, because uh, that will be viewable. Uh, I'm not going to be covered by a seat or anything like that, so I want to get all that rust cleaned up. And I think we're actually going to try and polish it. I'm pretty sure I've got some cutting compound left somewhere here in the shelves, so I'm going to search for that. And once we get um, all the rust and stickers and everything off, we'll try and polish it.
Well, you can see that certainly makes a difference, um, but got a long ways to go on that yet before it's perfect. But I think I'm going to kind of give up on it for now. I mean, you can see what we started out with there, and then what just a little bit got us to. And I mean, that was just with marine cleaner wax. If I had an actual um, cutting compound, it would work a lot better. Uh, but I didn't have any here, so I'll probably just pick some up the next time that I'm working on the tunnel and uh, see how that works. But I uh, just kind of wanted to get a feel for how that was going to turn out. Um, but like I said, that'll take quite a bit of uh, work yet in the future. Probably going to call it there for the night, I think, and come back out in the morning. Um, not too much else I can do right now. I was just waiting for the brackets to dry here. I'm not sure. It'll probably be an hour or so before I can put another coat on them. Um, decided to go with the purple. The yellow looked kind of weird. Still thinking eventually they're going to end up black, but I was hoping to add a little bit of a splash of color to it somewhere, so we'll see how that looks once those go on. Uh, I'm not too sure what I'm going to tackle next. Uh, I just got to finish getting those brackets um, completely done. Uh, I'm going to have to pull the front ones out too and then weld um, some flat stock onto those. Again, to take up the gap like I did with the, the rear ones. Um, but once that's all done, we can finally move on to the front stuff. Uh, take a look at the engine. Um, clean everything out in there. We're definitely going to have to go through the carb. Um, and Jesus, now everything's so freaking dusty in here. I really shouldn't have did that yet, but oh well. Um, yeah, we're going to have to give it a bath, I think. Just bucket wash it and get it cleaned up a little bit. Like I said, clean all the mouse nests and stuff out from the belly pan. And then I'm still hoping that we might be able to get it out in the yard and go for a little bit of a ride this weekend, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to head in the house and I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. Morning. So, been out here today uh, just kind of doing some of the more boring stuff. Uh, threw the chain case together actually last night. I got to throw some oil in that yet. I think I'm probably just going to run some gear lube in it for now. Um, that's a topic of debate, I guess, what you should run in those. Most people just run whatever they have. Um, I think you can get specific chain case oil um, if you look for it hard enough online, but um, you know, you can ask two people what they use and you'll get 30 different answers. So for now, we're just going to run gear lube in there. Um, I pulled the exhaust out just to clean out from underneath it. Uh, there's a bunch of garbage down in there that I just wanted to get vacuumed out. I have the carb off, haven't cleaned it yet. Probably won't show that on video just because, um, you know, I've done multiple carbs on this channel already. Kind of gets boring after a while. Um, so we'll leave that out. Other than that, what else do we have to do? Oh, we got to get the recoil off and get the rope, new rope wound on there. That I will probably bring you guys in for um, just because I know a lot of people have difficulties with stuff like that. Um, anything where there's a spring involved can get kind of uh, sketchy. So, um, yeah, I'll bring you guys in for that. Other than that, it's just going to be getting the car back on after I clean it, and then kind of putting the exhaust back on, replacing some fuel lines. Um, I'll have to get some gas in the tank. Probably going to have to go get some gas. I don't think I have any here. But, um, yeah, I think there's a very good possibility that we will have this thing out in the snow today. So uh, stay tuned, I guess. Oh. We do have to get the left side ski off and do something with that carbide because um, if you remember from the very first video there's a huge dent in that ski and the carbide is all bent up. Um, so for now I don't have a replacement, probably just going to pull that off there and uh, cut the part off that's bent and then just run it that way for now. Um, and then within the next month or so I'm sure I'll get a replacement set and we'll get those put on. Yeah, so I'm going to get back to work. Uh, we'll get all this put back together. I'll bring you guys back in. Uh, when we do the recoil, and other than that, I'm just going to get this thing buttoned up and hopefully we can go for a ride. Alright, let's get that recoil off and get that rewound. Help if we have the right size socket. All right, let's see if we can't get this apart and back together. Uh, when I pulled it off, the snap ring was just laying in there. Um, so that could have been why, part of why it wasn't working so well. 
Um, but I'm assuming that goes, oh, there she goes, unwound. Uh, that snap ring should go on the end of this shaft and kind of hold this, hold this spring in there. Uh, okay. Gonna snip the end off of this and then grab my torch and then we'll melt the end of that a little bit to keep it from fraying. And I suppose for now I might as well do the same thing on the other end. I might have to do it again uh, once I figure out the length, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now just um, for the sake of making it easier to fish the end through everything. So, fish our rope through, and tie a knot in the end of it. And I guess the spring in this one is actually retained, so I could be wrong here, but it seems like, seems like you go ahead and wind the rope up first, and since the spring is retained and under constant tension, um, you shouldn't have to worry about winding it at all. Um, we'll see in a second here if I'm correct or not. Make sure I got this going the right way, okay. Yeah, so once you have it wound up, um, all you really have to do is just pop it down in there, and since, like I said, that spring is retained and under tension, when you pull on the rope, the spring just rewinds it. Um, which is kind of like the opposite of, like, the pull start on a lawnmower, at least the ones that I've worked with, you always have to mess around with the springs quite a bit once you get them back in, but this should be good. clip back in and now the spring All right, got to grab my snap ring pliers. And I don't know if I'll be able to do this with the tips that are on these. Might have to change them out. We'll see. All right, that is on there. So. Looks like we got a functioning recoil. Albeit slightly funny sounding, but being that that's an actual recoil rope, that should work a little bit better than what was on there. So let's go put that back on, and we'll get the uh, pull handle attached, and we'll call that good.
see what happens. Seems to work pretty all right. Much better than what was in there anyway. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the carburetor and then throw all the rest of this back together. I'll pop the hood on and uh, maybe we'll take it out for a ride. I'll see you guys in a little while. All right, so we're back to the point of it being able to run again, or at least it should be able to run. Um, before we take it outside and run it around, I want to run it in here a little bit and just check the track, uh, make sure that's gonna rotate. Um, with it up in the air, the tension looks about right to me. Um, with no weight or anything pulling on the track, there's about um, two fingers of deflection right there in the middle. Um, so that should be a pretty decent starting point. Um, I think we take it out and as long as there's no ratcheting, we should be fine. Um, but yeah, um, I just want to start it up here, make sure everything's going to work uh, and see if we can get it to idle.
Definitely running a little bit rich right now. Mixed way too much oil in with the gas, but figured it'd be a little bit better to have a little extra in there than uh, not enough since it's been sitting for a while. But um, this all seems to be good. Uh, the track seems aligned, doesn't seem too tight. I think it's actually borderline on the tight side. Um, but I'll have to play around with that a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck that mess of wires uh, back in there. And the hood doesn't fit great. The hinges broke off on the front, obviously, since it's not on there. Um, but I'm going to fasten that back down as well as I can. Like I said, get the wires sort of half-assed taken care of. And then I think we're going to spin this around and just take it for a little ride through the yard. Um, that carbide on the left side is still all jacked up. Um, so I don't want to don't ride it too much or ride it too hard. I'd like to get that straightened out before I do anything, but it's going on the afternoon on Sunday here, and I don't want to make you guys wait another week to see it in action. I can always bring it back in here and work on it afterwards, um, which is more than likely what we're going to do. I'm sure I'll still be working on this next weekend, but um, yeah, without further ado, let's get this thing buttoned up and go take it for a ride.
Well, boys, she's a beast. The Yola Rotax 503 has got some life left in it. A little bit difficult to ride without a seat on there, but we'll get something fabbed up in the future. I think that's the route we're going to go. I'm going to try and weld up some webbing and then just get some foam and some kind of fabric and make my own for it instead of swapping something off of a newer style of rev chassis, but we'll see what happens there. That's the direction I'm leaning right now anyway, but definitely too much of a rake to it. The suspension's too stiff. I'm going to see if I can soften it up a little bit. Uh, I'm not super sure um, all the adjustments that you can do with the SC103, but I know they're pretty adjustable, so I think we'll get that straightened out. But other than that, not bad. Um, no binding in the suspension. The track's nice and aligned. It's not uh, too tight, not too loose. There is a bit of vibration, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. Kind of hard to say. I think it's actually in the drive belt or in the primary clutch, um, but I'm really not too worried about it right now. I mean, for 150 bucks, what do you expect, right? Um, Got to get some sort of uh, intake on it yet, uh, some sort of air filter. Didn't have an air box on it. Um, not really necessary to run a filter, um, but I would like to throw something on there. Might even like route it out through the side of the hood. Kind of make like a cold air intake style type thing. Not that that would actually give me any performance gains. I mean, it might give me something, but nothing noticeable. Um, but I just think that would look kind of cool. And considering we don't have an air box for it, why not? Still got to go through that wiring harness. I still think I'm going to pull it all the way out and just, you know, fully repair everything that I can and then put it back in there. I'm not running a speedo on it right now just because of the whole drive shaft situation. I did not put the, um, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the little attachment piece back on the bearing retainer on that side, but we'll do that in the future. Uh, what else we got to do? Definitely got to do something with that carbide. That ski was kind of dragging, so we'll have to get that looked at. And yeah, I don't know. She'll definitely uh, make an appearance in more videos coming up. I haven't really ridden a snowmobile seriously in probably the better part of a decade now, so that was uh, enjoyable, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Hopefully we'll get it out and actually take it for a ride. Um, I still have to register it. We've got probably a solid two and a half, three months of winter left here yet. Uh, usually have rideable snow yet into uh, April. Time will tell. We'll see how it goes. Definitely a fun project. Uh, I had a good time with it. Glad I figured out what I did wrong in the last video. Uh, with the suspension and i don't know if you ask me this thing looks freaking cool well it is sunday afternoon now i'm pretty wrecked gonna head in the house just sit by the wood stove and relax for the rest of the afternoon probably get going on editing this video and the one before this finish that one get it posted uh hopefully in the future we're gonna be doing some more work to the camper as you can see i pretty much have it gutted that's all of the remnants of the interior sitting over there in that pile so I'm thinking in the near future here, we'll probably bounce back and forth between uh, the Everest project and the camper. Would be nice to have that camper usable by some point this summer. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. I appreciate you guys watching. I had a blast doing this. I hope you enjoyed the videos, and I guess we'll catch you in the next one.